What's going on everyone? It's Dave from Smart Fitness. Now today we're going to do another product review. This one is not really so much about building muscle, but rather improving and maintaining your GI health. So this product, it's called Autrim Teal. Again, it's another product that I've seen and came across from the podcast that I listened to, Superhuman Radio. And I thought to myself, as somebody with IBD, I'm always trying to improve my digestive health. So if I can do it through natural means and healthy means, why not give it a shot? But rather than myself taking it, I decided to try somebody like my girlfriend, Carly. Now, Carly has an undiagnosed digestive disease, or issue, not disease rather. We're not entirely sure what it is, but I'm almost convinced that it's uh, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, because of the simple fact that she's, for the entire time that I've known her, and the entire time that she's been alive, her parents can vouch on this, she's always been somebody who's been a little bit gassier and gets bloated substantially easier than what would be, quote unquote, the normal population. So based on that, I decided to look for some methods on helping to improve her. So we changed stuff in her diet. So it would be something that would be high sugar or a super high starchy diet or super high protein diet, stuff like that we kind of tried to regulate out. And yes, that did help her, but it didn't entirely improve everything to a degree. So Carly eats a pretty clean diet. It's quite frankly, it's not the same degree as mine, just because of the simple fact that she doesn't follow the same protocols as I do. Uh, she doesn't like intermittent fasting. We tried around that and that didn't really work out too well for her because of she's always hungry at the beginning of the day and the end of the day, but throughout the day, she's kind of okay. And you can't really intermittent fast like that because it defeats the purpose. So stuff like that could affect the bacterial overgrowth because of constantly stimulating your digestive health. As well, she noticed almost no difference from probiotics and very minimal to limited differences with stuff like digestive enzymes. Now, probiotics, um, I'm going to do another video on this, but I'm not entirely sure if I even agree with the premise of probiotics anymore after realizing that the premise of them is essentially stimulating your body with um, specific colonies of the same type of probiotic. So if you're chronically using them, you're going to basically limit your digestive bacterial probiotics to that 30 billion of the same type of seven colonies per se. So you're not really getting 35 billion different probiotics, you're getting 35 billion of the same type of colonies. So say you start with 35 different colonies and you take this same probiotic for about 10 years, or sorry, 10 weeks, not years, you're going to limit yourself to having like seven different colonies rather than 35. So you're kind of condensing stuff. So it's not exactly the greatest thing. In digestive enzymes, there's very limited evidence on it actually doing anything unless you have an enzymatic problem such as lactose intolerance where you can take the lactase enzyme out so that leads us to this product called Ochitil. Now, essentially this product claims that it helps with bloating, abdominal discomfort, and it changes in your bowel habits. Uh, the pro product was created by a certified gastroenter gastroenterologist in the United States, and he's on the board of gastroenterology. So based on that alone, he has some sort of reputable skills, but as any good person knows, you can't really use that as your baseline. So I turn to the backside here and I look at what's in it. It has, Quibratro extract, conquer tree extract, and M. balsamia wild extract leaf, which the uh, wild extract leaf is basically just a peppermint extract. As well, it has stuff like cellulose, vegetable capsules, vegetable magnesium stearate, and silica, which basically helps create the product itself. So from here, I wanna break down the product based on the individual ingredients, as well as the research efficacy, or efficacy, sorry, of each one. So as a caveat, there isn't a ton of literature on this product being with everything being used together beyond um, what the Kenneth Brown, the creator of the product used, but he used double blind randomized controlled studies. So he did follow what would be quote unquote, the regular type of optimal studies. So I've got my laptop here to help me and we're just going to jump right into it. So um, the claims of it from their website is it's a, nutraceutical, which means it's a food containing health giving additive when, with medicinal benefits. So essentially it's an all natural product that helps you. It relieves bloating, abdominal discomfort with or without constipation or diarrhea caused by gas in the gut. It is not a probiotic and it is not a digestive enzyme. It makes that very clear that it's not. It promotes a healthy gut and helps with immune support. The creator, again, Kenneth Brown, suggests it works through mixed polyphenols with ingredients that remove the bacteria in the small intestine that bothers you which is how small intestinal bacterial overgrowth works. The peppermint combs the area to calm you down. I'm not really sure what that means, but there is research suggesting that peppermint does help calm digestive uh, discomfort. 
and the cuibracho soaks up the gas methane and actually removes some of the bacteria, while the conquer tree shuts off the enzymes that produce gas in your digestive tract. So to break it down, um, we're going to talk about each one of these. So first, let's go over something here. So he's got two studies, as I talked about. Uh, both of them were done within the last two years, one in 2016 and one in 2017. And they were both performed over a fairly short amount of time. The one in 2016, sorry, it was 2015 and 2016. The one in 2015 was performed over a two-week period with a double-blind randomized placebo and experimental group uh, for people with IBS level C. The long story short of the study, the participants had improvements over a two-week period. In the 2016 study, they had a relatively small sample size of 24 people, with 21 saying that they had improvements in their GI tract over a period of six weeks. So clearly, these ingredients have done something based on this guy's study. So to break down each one of them individually, we're going to start with the peppermint extract. So a meta-analysis of peppermint oil that I came across with uh, eight randomized controls suggests that peppermint oil basically might and might not do something to affect your digestive tract of people with IBS. Some people have a positive effect, while two of the studies actually showed that there was no effect whatsoever. So the role of peppermint oil and peppermint extract actually doing something is questionable at best by itself. Working into the cuibratio extract, the literature on this product is quite, or on this uh, extract itself, not a product, is quite sparse as a lone ingredient, but when it's combined with other herbal extracts, it is, there is evidence research. Um, there's a lot of animal studies on it, so the whole human perspective might not necessarily be um, advantageous, but in sheep, it found to reduce the toxicity of the GI tract in terms of larvae and parasitic growth by 8%, so that's pretty substantial based on the amount of bacteria growth that sheep have, and they knew this through their fecal matter as you're able to actually test this, and the amount of larvae of the bacteria were used to basically determine a healthy GI gut of these sheep. Um, but beyond a certain period, which in this study it ended up being a three week period, there wasn't much more improvement. But at the same time, there's other studies from a meta-analysis uh, suggesting that it can play, it did play a role in reducing worm burden and what is called FEC in sheep, uh, which is the fecal number of eggs in the sheep uh, over a long term period. So essentially having a high content of FEC is bad. and this quibratio actually lowered it, so it shows that it could be beneficial. And finally, in another study, uh, it plays a role in decreasing methane. So for the human body, we know that methane causes gas. Now, cows were used in this study. Cows were the main, uh, I guess you'd call it buffer, of quibratio extract actually being beneficial. So they found that in cows, um, it did decrease it from a 29% methane in their digestive tract, or from 41 to 29%. So a decrease that is quite substantial. Um, and it could play a role in humans as well. However, humans are not cows. So in another study, it did not change methane in cattle whatsoever. So this other study that said it did, this one's saying the complete opposite. But it did have a protein binding effect on the extract, but the protein binding effect is not exactly clear. So, based on WebMD, um, as a final baseline here on this Quibatrio extract, it does not play a role in GI health help whatsoever, but it does do something to the diet in the GI, but we're not entirely sure what it is at this point in time. So moving on to the last product, the horse chestnut or conquer tree extract, um, there is some, though not uh, very rigorous medical evidence of horse chestnut treating stuff like diarrhea. Uh, so this could be a start for GI efficacy based on stuff like WebMD. But there isn't a ton of research on this chestnut root extract working by itself in the digestive tract either. So people with chronic venous efficiency, however, there is quite a bit of literature on that, but that is not exactly what we're looking for here. So it has also been linked to be an antioxidant. Um, as we know, quercetin and things like uh, camperfoil glycosins are anti antioxidants that help with intestinal diseases. Conquer tree extract uh, actually contains this camperfoil glycoside. Long story short, antioxidants can help with intestinal health. So ergo, GI health. So it could potentially be helping. It could be doing absolutely nothing. Again, 
Uh, it may, however, actually also be working as a prebiotic. So again, that could be affecting your GI health as well. Uh, when combined with things like flaxseed oil, there is literature suggesting that conquer tree um, extract as well as flaxseed oil work together to help with bacterial enzyme and bile acid concentrations. So it could work. So as my point of view here, there's a lot of wishy-washy evidence on whether or not each of these individual extracts are actually doing something, but when combined, they seem to have some sort of effect. So we're gonna bring Carly in and we're gonna get her opinion on this. Now, long story short, it, it, I've noticed it has worked for Carly. Whether or not she says it does is a different story. So we're gonna have her come in, sit down, give her point of view. Okay guys, so I've actually got Carly here, the uh, user of Autrantil, and she's going to give us her personal anecdotal uh, reviews of the product. So Carly, take it away. How did you feel when you had the product endlet from the first day to where you are now? Um, so for the first day, I didn't really feel much difference. I think it took about two weeks to feel a difference. Felt a lot less bloated. Um, I, I found I was able to eat more often. Wasn't worried about what I was eating, so I was very beneficial. What do you mean you were able to eat more often? As in like you didn't feel bloated, so you could act, you actually were able to eat? rather than feeling constantly full? Like yes, is, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. so I wasn't feeling uncomfortable after I ate. Okay. Um, so I did, I tried having three pills a day. I found that worked the best for me. And yeah, it just helped a lot. I think I'll continue to use it. So three pills a day as in one each, one with each major meal or? I'd have three in the morning with uh, my first meal. And then nothing the rest yes. of the day and, you're, and you've been good for that. If it, if it, um, if it felt, maybe sick or bloated throughout the day, I'd maybe add another pill at dinner time, but. Okay, and you are taking it with food? Yes. Okay. All right, so are you going to continue using this supplement? Definitely. I yeah? Think it's would you helpful. Would you recommend it to people in your type of situation? Mm -hmm. I think at this point it's good to try a lot of different things. I've tried a lot of different things, but I found this to be the most helpful. And then how does it compare to, say you're feeling upset, how does it compare to something like a Tums where it's a bicarbonate basis? Um, Say it, we'll, we'll say you're feeling gassy and your stomach's bloated, hypothetically here. How does it compare to something where its sole purpose is essentially reducing your gas buildup? Is it on like the same kind of playing field? It has a similar effect, I guess. It's not as quick in relieving any bloating or gassiness as, say, a Tums, but it does the same job. Okay, so it's more of like a long-term sustained release from, yeah. as you guys know, botanical extracts. Okay, Carly, right. thank you. Thanks. All right, guys, so basically, you've seen this product, so go ahead, give yourself a try. We know Carly here gave her opinion <laughs> on it, and she said the product did help her quite a bit. As always, ladies and gentlemen, stay strong, have a happy new year, and a strong 2018.